So this is Lake Oha. It's a uh, glacial lake. It's got a large amount of moraine at the end there, a moraine wall, which would have been left in the last glaciation. And in fact, you can see the lines across the other side of the hill there where the glaciers have come up and down this valley. It's a very beautiful piece of New Zealand. We're heading right up into the heart of it. Just into the valley on the left. The one on the right is the Dobson. And I think that might be just Mount Cook just poking over the top end of that. I'm not entirely sure about that, but it could well be. Anyway, that's where we're headed. But the road's changed over to here. Used to go straight through there, but the river's taken it out. Where we're headed is up here, about there somewhere, to Monument Hut. And then we're going to carry on up to Elko, which is well up the valley from there. And it's going to be cold. Alright, well it's the first night, we've got into Monument Hut and um, we are going to head up the valley tomorrow <coughs> and have a look at Alco. Um, the, the snow on the, on the ground starts just up from here so um, it's uh, going to be a bit of a cool walk tomorrow but hopefully the sun will poke over the hill and um, it'll soon get rid of some of the snow that's left anyway. Um, this valley, I've spent a lot of time in, uh, along with the Dobson, probably nearly, well, probably over 200 days. So it's a place I'm really comfortable um, coming in any time of the year. Uh, I know the area and I know the risks in the area. Um, yeah, it's a, a fantastic place all year round though. Uh, can have a few sand flies in summer, but so does everywhere, so yeah. Headed up around the corner there. Beautiful day, the sun's just starting to poke up over the hill. Just doing a bit of video on that, and uh, then we'll head up. Gorgeous day.
So this is the uh, Dazzler, the Dazzler Pinnacles. There's uh, a little bit up in there. So, um, quite a good climb up to the top of those pinnacles. And then uh, there's also a, um, a the gully to the right, which goes up into a saddle and you can see over into the Dobson. Remarkably, bull tar will live in these sorts of cliffs. We've seen them traversing walls, which you wouldn't believe. And at the moment, the bull tar will be up on those ridge lines and on the tops. And that So this is the, the Days of the Pinnacles again. You can see the pass in the middle. It's actually a lot further up into that pass than it looks from here. It's quite foreshortened. It's a very popular climbing route up to the left. And it goes up that ridge line up to the top of the Days of the Pinnacles. This time of year, um, the roof I'll be staying away from. I'm going to do a bit of pano and the first one is Mount Ward. And then as we pan across here, Mount Williams. And then in the background, Mount Hopkins. There's a hair over there. Come back. See how it is all now. Yeah. Huh. Anywho. Fair old distance when you're trudging through a bit of snow. So I'm sort of walking through this stuff and it's slowing my progress a bit. But it's Still, it's a beautiful day. I've now got wet feet, thank you very much. It's a drink, but there we go. Uh, I reckon another half an hour or so to the hut, and then we can get my, my toes dry. <laughs> Well, here we are at the Elko, just starting to get a bit cold now, it's supposed to go down to about minus 7 tonight, so we might do some astrophotography and uh, see how that goes. Sorry about the wind. Anyway, I think there's some hot, reasonably high winds predicted coming up, uh, so going out tomorrow might be a bit of a cold blustery day. So tonight I can get the fire started keep warm, dry off some stuff before heading out tomorrow. 
there's a number of huts in the area uh, just across the river here there's one and there's two on the true left further up from here right up to Richardson Biv been a long time since I've been up to Richardson Biv probably about 10 years or so and it's a fair old walk up there from memory anyway it's a great valley and uh, well worth a look rain last night which um, was a lovely night when we went to bed but uh, overnight it rained don't know how much but just enough for me to make me a bit concerned that we we're gonna have a problem today now it stopped at about two o'clock in the morning and everything's covered in a bit of ice rime but looks like the day's going to be good for the rest of the day so um, we'll head on out the rivers haven't come up in fact looks like they've gone down a little bit one of the things about these alpine rivers is they tend to breathe up and down during the day. As the ice, snow, glaciers uh, melts during the day, the river levels come up slowly and then overnight they'll drop. So the best time to get out if you've got a deep river crossing you're worried about is going out first thing in the morning, which is what we're doing today. We've got a couple of river crossings. Looks like everything's fine, so I'm not worried about it, but anyway, it'll be safe and sorry. So, it's about four hours out, a bit of filming and a bit of photography on the way, and uh, we'll catch you down there. So this Tar Creek always sounds very promising. I'll flip the camera around. It's up here. But it looks like a bugger of a place to get into. Even if you kind of go up this way here or you know, this way, there's difficulties with all of those. So I'm afraid, whilst I've hunted most of these hills behind me here, all the way up to Richardson Biv, I've never bothered to go in there because it just looks like a real mission. So if anybody knows how you get in there, Oh, drop an email or something. I'd be interested to know. So if folks are interested, this is what I'm doing filming on this, this trip. It's a Nikon Z7 on a small rig cage, a small rig handle, and, um, secondary manufacturer side handle. I've been using a, um, a filter holder for neutral density filters, and it's got a, a road video mic on the top. The track, we're about halfway down there. If you look, if you have an idea. But after it rained last night, well, the track is like a, just like an ice rink. So having to walk on this stuff here to get, get traction. It's a bit of a story. I ended up through this ridge line here once and the camera's going to go in and out of focus and I apologise for that and then came out and went around that knob and in the back there was a, a cream coloured tar which is a bit unusual, big bull couldn't get to it 
and the fog came in so I came back another time went up that ridge line and the plan was to come down this chute here so went around the back came over the top except again fog came in missed the top of this bit here where I was going to go across and down went all the way around the back and came off of this piece here and then followed a chute all the way down to here and that was probably the closest I've ever come to being hypothermic on the hill it was a um, major mission came down off the hill all right warmed up there got, got some food came down and then uh, you know all was well but just goes to show just how quickly these things can change and I guess I often don't call myself a mountaineer but I suppose when you're in that sort of country it's mountaineering so now we say goodbye to the Hopkins and back home it's a fantastic place come have a visit sometime